What's up, man? It's uh, Vanilla Trail, a.k.a. White Boy Chris, a.k.a. St. Chris. You can call me Chris if you want. <laughs> um, we're, to, we're here with uh, A1 Hip Hop in Houston, Texas. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Advice you would give your 13 year old self? Oh man, I ain't had that question in a while. Um, be patient. Patience for sure. Be patient and be open minded. What's your favorite DJ of the 90s? The 90s? Oh no, nah, I don't even know if. Man, my favorite DJ of all time is Jazzy Jeff. DJ Jazzy Jeff is like the staple <laughs> for me. Um, even now, like he he brings in the old with the new. He's one of the coldest with cutting and everything. So definitely him. Yeah. Um, who inspired you to be a DJ? I've I've always been I've always been into music. Music was always like the big thing for me. My mom was a singer, my dad was in a band. We would have like Wednesday night jam sessions at the house. I learned about DJing um, actually like in the days when I should have been in college when I was just touring around with B King and T Wayne and uh, I was seeing like some of my friends were DJs and I was trying to learn, but I was just like, everyone was always telling me like, oh no, you're the dancer. Like, you don't need to learn this. Like, you're good. You can just, you're good at dancing. You should just do that. And then when I, I, had, um, I had moved to Vegas with my good friend and mentor, Jay Bling. And when I told him I wanted to learn how to DJ, he was like, oh yeah, here, here's a board. Here's all the software you need. Here's what all this does. And he'd sit with me every day and like, if he, if he would let me play around with the boards at his house and then if like I needed help with something, he would just tell me like, oh, do this instead of this or whatever. And then he helped me get my first ever gigs. You know what I'm saying? He put me on some really amazing events like that I, that I was nowhere near ready for, but being thrown into the fire like that really set me up to be kind of like good in any environment. Wow. Um, you know, you out here traveling moving around, the woman would like to know, what type of woman does Trill like? Oh my gosh. Um, the love life is, is pretty boring. It's pretty boring. I, I always tell people, I'm like, I really don't have a personal life. Uh, the thing I've learned, cause like, I'm a big, I'm definitely like a romantic, I'm definitely a relationship guy. But the big thing I've learned is to just kind of like, be okay with everything having its season because nowadays like a relationship requires a lot of attention and a lot of a lot of focus and a lot of my attention and focus is kind of like nurturing this thing I'm working on right now with my career and with my own self-development so I think I just kind of like when people are around they're around and if they're not it's okay uh, the type of woman I look for is someone that's very peaceful, someone that's very independent, uh, obviously nurturing, kind, and probably just the same burnt out sense of humor I have. <laughs> that's about it. You hear this lady? So I mean, <laughs> we need somebody down to earth here, right? you know what I'm saying? Low key, you know what I'm saying? We just picked, I, I just, you know, we get a lot of, you get a lot of out of towners, so people forget. People, you know, we started with from Beyonce's, Debbie Allen's, you know, so it's that acoustic aesthetic 
that we have, and not just the turnups. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's, it's well rounded. So people forget that. You know what I mean? So people gotta understand you can get all type of women here. You know. And now uh, Houston, especially now that the whole country moved here, you got you got. You got every different type of woman, every different type of food, every different type of traffic. It's, it's all here now. So it's like, you never know. Now, speaking of food, what are your top three, you may ruffle some feathers, favorite food places for you to go to in Houston? Oh, man. I probably don't have the coolest spots. Uh, I, I go to Lost and Found a lot. Lost and Found is definitely definitely a cool little spot to just kind of chill. They got some really good food, some really good drinks. Um, food spots. I got this little Italian spot I go to, uh, Copa, Copa Asteria, which is like my little like drink some wine, have some pasta. And then, um, man, what else? You know what? You know what the sleeper is? Is I always go to Cafe Lyell yes. in Midtown. Yes. That's my little sleeper. Go smoke some hookah, get some work done. Right. Food's good. Staff's cool. Like it's it's a nice little vibe for sure. I like more relaxed places. <laughs> and then for the fancy, you know what? Let me let me take off. Um, let me switch to the Italian joint for Brenner's on the Bayou. I tell everyone if you're trying to take a girl somewhere real nice. Good food, don't it never misses. Brenner's on the bike. Okay, okay. It ain't gonna break your bank either. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's def it might. It might. <laughs> <laughs> it's not insane, but it's it's definitely not cheap. Uh, Brenner's a classy little spot. Um, how how was it working with the Houston Texans, man? Oh man, it's been such a blessing. Ever since I started like doing kind of like here and there gigs with them, like growing the relationship with the staff and even like how like even the higher ups to the like the sales team to the president of the company, they're all like intertwined. Like you, you bump into everyone, you talk to everyone, you build a relationship with everyone. So it's really like a family environment and everyone helps each other. And it's a super dope experience to be a part of it right now when everything is kind of like picking up. Because everyone's so excited, like every time you're, I'm, I'm going, I find myself going up to the offices just to talk to people, wow. hang out with the entertainment team, hang out with the mascot, like it's hilarious. But it's really, it's a really good environment, and it's going, it's going to be a really crazy year for sure. It's about time that we change the uniforms, right? Like, yeah, I know, big uniforms. Instead of those boring right? uniforms, we had, man. <laughs> I wouldn't say they were boring. They were classic, <laughs> man. They were, they were great, and um, it's cool to have a refresh at this time because like they were planning it for two years. Oh, really? So they didn't know we were going to have this huge pop right now. So, like, the year we're having this huge pop, we get brand new uniforms, and there's also, like, a huge influx of younger players. Right. So it's really exciting, especially the new, the new logo. Man. So. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you embedded. You got the tattoo. I mean, you yeah, I was going to get the Astros H, but then they, they showed me the logo, and I was like, I'm getting that instead. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, and then, you know, H-Town, you yeah, can't yeah, never yeah. go wrong, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I got to have the city on me. Um, what are some do's and don'ts uh, when approaching a DJ while you're on the set or off the set? It's always good to start positive. I always tell people. My, my personal preference is um, introduce yourself. A lot of people just find themselves either coming up and asking for something or coming up to tell something. But like, introduce yourself. Like, be right. like, let it be a human interaction. That's always important to me. And that's usually like big on if I'll play your song or not. Is if you like, <laughs> were gener like if you were kind enough to come and be like, hey, what's up, man? I'm so and so. Right. A lot of people just get straight to the point, and it's like, let's let it be human. Like, I know you're trying to use me right now, but <laughs> let's let it be a normal interaction. Right. Uh, don't song requests. Just, just give that up this year, please. I mean, there's enough memes on the internet to where people should know that it's just like, just let just them do this thing. Um, unless you like already have that relationship with the DJ, like right. cool. Um, don't, don't. Some of the clubs I do, like the booths aren't secure. A lot of people grab the booth and start shaking the computer oh. and everything. If you're too drunk, don't even come up there. Uh, and then the DJ doesn't owe you nothing too, so don't expect them to just do what you say. 
a lot of people, you'll tell them no, and they'll be like, what? Right. Who the fuck do you think you are? Like, what the, like, they start cussing you out. But it is what it is. I'm pretty easy going with people. Uh, what has been the best DJ set you have done so far? Man, I, man, there, I have, like, for different environments. Like, I did one, I think, about a month ago in L.A., and it was, like, house music. And that was, like, it was so much fun. It was outside the L.A. Uh, Coliseum, Memorial Coliseum, like, where Drake and Kanye did their show. Right there. I got to open up for uh, Cascade and Egg Craze, and it was, like, I don't usually do that genre of music. So that was really fun because it was, like, crazy party atmosphere. And then Texans playoff game against the Browns was the highest energy I've ever felt doing a DJ gig. But then, like, man, I would say, um, like, this past Friday, like, it's, it's really like, I got these two gigs I do in Houston. I do an R&B party on Thursday and a dance party on Friday. And every week, that is just like, top tier best experience I've ever had DJ most it's my favorite sets to do people are super appreciative of the music we're able to like have a lot of fun with it so I think I think this new thing we have going tops anything I've done because it's like the energy is just out of this world and it's really fun like no one has an expectation they're just coming in to see what happens and that's that's a lot of fun okay um if you was to meet, if you was to meet DJ Screw, what would, what would be the, some of the things you would ask him? I would, see, I'm real big in like understanding the connection between a creative and their personal development with themselves. So I would really like to understand what went through his head when he decided to start chopping and screwing music and really what he tied in from music to his personal life, like to what what kind of phase between the two? Like, where did he see, like, how did his mind digest that kind of balance? You know what I'm saying? That's, that's the real thing, is, is getting a better understanding of what made him try the things he tried. You know, have you heard of Daryl Scott? Dale Scott? Daryl Scott. You Daryl know, Scott? He, no. he said he was the one originally that created Screw. Oh, really? I actually met him as a child. Yeah. And I remember him telling me this story when I was younger. Um, but I love how he said, yeah, I created it, but I didn't really do nothing with it. Yeah. So I kind of passed the torch. Yeah. Or I, or I kind of, you know, I, I had the food laid out. Mm -hmm. He just added his own flavors to yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. You know, um, so just, I would love to see the, a nice biopic. Yeah, I know they did a little for teaser. Sure, for sure. You know, and the guy did a good job playing them. So that, that would be phenomenal. Yeah. You know, especially for the city. Hopefully Travis Scott, you know, Beyonce. <laughs> but I heard Chill is gonna do it, but I just wonder how they're gonna do it with all the licensing with the songs. Yeah, I'm sure it's a lot. Yeah, unless they have like maybe five main songs and the rest would be freestyle type stuff, you know? Yeah. You know, but the legacy of them is, has been phenomenal. The whole world is yeah. screwed. They got certain genres, don't even realize that it's screwed. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? You know, so, um, where do you see yourself in five years? I don't know. I don't, I don't think that's up to me, you know? I think I just kinda, I live, I live in the present and let God take me where he's gonna take me. So I could be, I could be a pastor in five years. I could be a dog walker in five years. I could be homeless, I could be rich. I just, I'm very happy with the blessings I have right now, and I, I trust whatever he got for me. I don't really worry too much about it. <laughs> That's what's going on now. You just don't know. Yeah, nah, I mean, yeah. God was very blatant with me a few years ago that this was all coming, what's happening now. I just had to take care of me and take care of the people around me. And I'm really happy with everything. And even in my plans for what I want to do now is like, I really like say, hey, like this is what I want, but listen, you're doing your thing, like I trust you, so let me know. <laughs> uh, I forgot to ask, uh, what's your top three favorite club you would tell somebody outside the city to go to? Out here? Yeah. 
Off the Record is a huge one. Off the Record is like, it's a beautiful space um, for all ages. Uh, outside of that, if you want like super crazy turn up, like I always tell my out of town friends, like you gotta go by camp. That's like the staple, you know what I'm saying? That's the spot everybody gotta go check out when they're in town. Food's good, drink's good, hook is good, the vibes are good, the presentation, the interior design, like the whole spot's just super genuinely like creative. Right. Yeah, it's super dope. And then um, my personal favorite is Crew, which is in downtown. Like it's a good little like just little post up and vibe. Like like you can get it all there. You can get some R and B. You can get some turn up. You can get some whatever you're looking for. And they got good food too. Staff is super dope, super friendly, super kind. So yeah. Last words to the people. Um. Shoot, I don't know. I don't know. There's so much. There's so much you could say. I think. I think the big. The big one is. Um, man, I don't. I'm, I'm. I can't think of how it's worded, but it's like. Be in a constant state of renewing your mind. Like just be in a constant state of just being open to everything around you and just enjoy life, man. Shit happens. You're going to be all right, though. <laughs>